After a very quiet night's sleep at the end mooring at Torxey, it was time to travel down the Fosdyke navigation towards Lincoln. The canal is said to be one of the oldest in England and was built in 120 AD by the Romans. It connects the River Witham at Lincoln to the River Trent at Torxey. Phew! I think it's going to be a rather warm day today. Already it's about 28 degrees Celsius and it's half past nine in the morning. However, when being on the back of the boat, although I've got loads and loads of suntan cream on, it does feel a lot cooler purely because of the, the breeze, which is quite nice. Molly sat here in the shade, watching the, the world go by. I'm heading down um, the navigation towards Lincoln today. Unfortunately, I'm not going to carry on further from the Lincoln Basin. Um, I really wanted to go down to Boston. But to be totally honest, I haven't enjoyed this canal, um, a number of reasons. The banks are all very built up, lots and lots of nettles, lots of brambles and weeds, so you can't moor up. The designated mooring spots are always very, very busy, regardless of what time of day you get there. I've gone past about three yesterday or the day before, purely trying to moor up. And then, unfortunately, because this canal is um, very heavily dominated by cruisers, large cruisers, um, because of their draft and because of the fact that they've got two engines, that sort of thing, they go past very fast and it doesn't half rock your narrow boat all over the place. So I've decided I'm not going to carry on down to Boston. Um, even though there was going to be the lovely Lincolnshire countryside and instead I'm going to turn around in the basin and head back. The Fosdyke is set within the very flat county of Lincolnshire. The 11 mile canal is a series of long, wide and very straight reaches flanked by high banks on either side. Once leaving the small village of Torxey, the navigation curves and remains straight until just before the village of Saxelby. This is one of only two suburban areas on this route. On the final straight towards Lincoln, there is Burton Waters. This combines a marina, boat sails and a number of houses with their own private jetties and mainly caters for cruiser style boats. Finally, after passing a very long stretch of privately moored boats, the canal opens out into Brayford Pool, right in the centre of Lincoln. This is where you join the river with them, if navigating down to Boston. Village of Saxelby is quite nice. Um, there's water there, there's showers there and bins etc. There's a train station quite close by as well. Um, I think you need to get to the mooring spots relatively early, sort of early afternoon, um, to avoid them being filled up because of the, the village is so popular. It's a nice break between um, going down to, to the city of Lincoln. The navigation is wide and deep and at the time I travelled, had very little weed. I was able to find a mooring spot at Pie Wipe Inn, where I could stay for up to 48 hours. I found this was a good place to leave my car as I continued east. If you aren't a patron in either the bar or the restaurant, there is a simple £1 a night charge to leave your vehicle. The University of Lincoln occupies a number of buildings to the south of the canal as you get closer to the city. The earliest origins of Lincoln can be traced to the remains of an Iron Age settlement of round wooden dwellings right by the Brayford Pool. The pool, or wharf as it's also referred to, is quite large. There are lots of restaurants, bars and a cinema along the bank of the wharf. 
and within the pool a number of brand new floating pontoons were being built. By the looks of it their length is more suited to cruises rather than narrowboats. Lincoln is a cathedral city and is in quite a remote part of England with flat countryside in all directions around it. Sitting on a small hill in the centre of the city are two significant buildings. The Norman Lincoln Castle was built in the late 11th century by William the Conqueror and is only one of two castles in Britain with two moats. This area is Exchequer Gate and it's in the city's cultural quarter. You'll find a gold postbox here. Royal Mail postboxes are traditionally red but a number around Great Britain have been painted gold to commemorate gold medal winners at the 2012 Summer Olympics and Paralympics. This box celebrates Paralympic dressage rider Sophie Wells who is from Lincoln. Through Exchequer Gate is the second significant building and that is Lincoln Cathedral. The building of the cathedral commenced in 1072 and continued in several phases throughout the medieval period. It's the seat of the Anglican bishop and is the third largest cathedral in Britain. Much of the design and construction of the cathedral was experimental and suffered a number of setbacks. In 1185 the cathedral was partly destroyed by an earthquake and in 1237 the cathedral tower collapsed. It was replaced in 1311 with a new tower topped with a spire. The cathedral itself is absolutely vast. There's lots and lots of different corridors and lots of different rooms coming off it. Originally it had a central spire and it was the tallest building in the world for 238 years. However, in 1548 the spire fell down in a storm and had to be removed. The cathedral features two major rose windows. On the north side is Dean's Eye which survived from the original structure and on the south side is the Bishop's Eye which is one of the largest examples of curvilinear tracery where patterns are continuous curves. Sighted at the top of a stone pillar in the Angel Choir is the Lincoln Imp. It took quite a while for me to find it but legend has it that he caused so much havoc that one of the angels turned him to stone. If you come to Lincoln the cathedral and castle are well worth visiting. Before I left Lincoln I wanted to take you through one final area of the city. As you come around the corner there, just from the, the main basin, there's a bit of a pull on the water and it tries to buff you into the wall here. I'm now on the river Witham and the channel becomes extremely narrow. This is High Bridge and it was built in 1160 AD. It's the oldest bridge in the United Kingdom which still has buildings on it. The timber framed shops on the western side of the bridge date from around 1550. On the eastern side of the bridge there was a chapel dedicated to Thomas Becket in 1235. In flood this bridge is virtually unnavigable for boaters. In the middle ages it was often referred to as the murder hole as according to local tales whenever a body was thrown into the Witham it would often be washed ashore either under or near the bridge. 
the name was changed to Glory Hole to remove any connection to the grisly nature of death and bloated corpses. The original term was used to refer to the halo often represented over the heads of the saints and Christ, rather different to what it's saddled with today. The river passes under a new steel millennium sculpture and threads its way through a lively area of pubs, restaurants and shops before widening out. The lock here is rather strange, it's a guillotine lock which means that it goes up and down rather than swings open. Lots and lots of mooring along here and it's all 14 days. Um, it's quite quiet down here as well, apart from when lorries are reversing. I decided to end my journey here, as the high banks along the route to Boston meant it was a little featureless. My friend Brady Harron, who has a number of successful YouTube channels, wanted to come and visit with his Australian friend, and I wanted to show him a traditional English canal, so headed up the River Trent to the Chesterfield Canal. If you've not already subscribed, please do, it doesn't cost you anything, and by clicking the bell icon, you'll be notified about future releases. Until next time, see you later.